And again, you know, as we've, we're saying over, over and again, this is a step change. So currently, PC clusters, as has been mentioned today, are used in research for medical imaging. But you can replace a cluster with a machine, such as the ones next door, a personal personal supercomputer, which is sitting under someone's desk in a clinic. So, you know, it's, it's staggering. And the cluster that we'll, we'll be building in Cambridge will enable research to be done with a very large number of scans, and there'll be scans from different sources, different types of scan, and very large number of subjects. We've developed a high-level um, image processing toolkit called FurTree, which allows the user to specify different um, image processing uh, processes and produce optimized GPU code on the fly, and, uh, and so allow real-time interactive processing. So in this case, um, there's two image processes going on, one's a false color and one's a white. And this, this, this is a particularly interesting, although it doesn't look so interesting on this slide, but this is finding point tracking. And this is very interesting because this also has a medical application. And with the a uh, personal supercomputer, this will allow for the first time real-time processing of stereoscopic images at that high frame rate, frame rate, 200 hertz. And this is going to enable clinical trials of a system to monitor chest wall movements and, say, breathing in intensive care patients. So you, with the power that's available in the machines next door, it really makes this feasible, whereas it certainly wouldn't be on current hardware without a very large cluster. So it turns out you can get um, data from the sky, the micro microwave background radiation, and it's about 10 million points. And in order to analyze that data, it, what, it break, what it boils down to is large matrix manipulations. Um, so this is a sort of commonality between different, uh, different fields again. And we've now got a GPU code which gives us 50 gigaflops, that's double precision, that's two thirds of the absolute peak performance that you can get on a modern uh, security card. But with a Tesla personal supercomputer with three or four of these cards, that's going to accelerate the high level of data exploitation by end users. And in this context, an end user is an individual scientist with a workstation at his desk or her desk. And the cluster will en enable far faster and more accurate lower level processing. That's processing of the raw data rather than the sort of pre-processed data which these guys look at. This is my last slide. And what I put, what I had first was that it's no longer news to say that my code's running 10 times faster, 20 times faster. And, you know, you can't really publish that. And, but the reason for that is CUDA, because CUDA is enabling scientists to do that work. So we're no longer talking about programmers with graphics experience working in OpenGL or another graphics API. CUDA is a language that scientists can get to grips with and do their own programming and see the results. So the challenge now is to deliver this new science that CUDA and Tesla make possible, and that's what we're going to continue doing at Cambridge.